Hi, let's continue on this cold day here in uh, the latter part of winter in Oregon. If you're new to this channel, you could go to the table of contents um, to see what's here, or if you're brand new to the trailer that explains how this all works. Well, let's go on and talk about low-dose lithium. I'm excited to do that because basically, um, low-dose lithium is like a new medication. It's so different from full-dose lithium it's like a different drug, but it's not well understood because it's not been well studied because there's no money to be made from studying lithium. Um, so really, this is an evolution that not just me, but many other clinicians have come to um, from just working uh, with lithium and with a lot of patients. So um, I'm going to talk about um, just quickly some examples to show you why I'm so excited about it um, very briefly. Um, and then explain low dose versus high dose, who's it for, um, the dosing that I do to achieve zero side effects, um, which means that some people can't take it because they get them, um, and the risks that are associated with low dose as opposed to high dose lithium, and then why isn't this such a great idea more widely used. So just quickly some examples, a businessman who every fall would see his mood start to sag and his productivity go down, discovered that taking 300 milligrams of lithium um, uh, just completely relieved those symptoms. And interestingly, he would know to start it because he started have, having difficulty figuring out what cereal to have in the morning. Notice that year after year, uh, the gal in the middle of uh, representation of a woman with um, bipolar two did great on Lamotrigine until menopause. Symptoms started coming back, added 300 milligrams of lithium, and it's done great for 10 years. And then lastly, a primary care doc who called me up to say he'd been treating a patient for years with antidepressants, and at my suggestion through our collaborative care system, um, added 150 milligrams of lithium and could not believe the results that he was seeing. So low-dose lithium versus full-dose. <clears throat> um, Low dose is basically down there so low that we wouldn't consider using it for the things that we use full doses for. The doses involved would be like 150 to 450 or maybe 600 milligrams of lithium carbonate um, for low dose versus 600 and more like 750 and up for full doses of lithium. Um, but actually, I think of it as defined by blood levels. So how much lithium is in your bloodstream? We routine, routinely measure this when someone's taking lithium. And low dose in my head is low, uh, is so low that it wouldn't be sufficient to prevent a manic episode, um, which comes in at around 0.5 and up, um, and certainly well away from the doses and blood levels that are used to treat a manic episode. So who's low-dose lithium for? I think of it as everyone across the whole mood spectrum, with the exception probably of people with bipolar one, because uh, the depression with mania uh, part of the spectrum, because those people need protection against a subsequent manic episode and low doses of lithium kind of by definition don't do that. Um, it's also low-dose lithium for um, consideration for the prevention of dementia, the, Evidence about this is accumulating. Um, most experts would say it's not definitive, and most experts would not uh, have you start taking lithium. Um, but I have a whole separate video about that if you want to take a look. Um, so um, the dosing, I think this is really important. 150 milligram capsule of lithium is so small that when you're like working with people who are going to take 900 milligrams, you wouldn't even bother. But if you start with 150 milligrams and establish that that causes no problems whatsoever, a few people actually will notice improvement. And interestingly, there are some data about suicidal thinking. Um, and I've, I've seen it happen, but uh, that doesn't mean much. What we need is larger trials. There's some debate about this as well. Suicidal thinking just disappearing with lithium, even when depression hasn't responded so much. Um, so there's something about that. And, and I've mentioned that in the dementia video as well. Um, so starting on 150, make sure there's no problems. And if no benefit, then go to 300. And again, make sure there's no problems, no benefit, go to 450. And again, same drill. Um, and eventually, 
doing that unless something good has happened, working one's way up to 600 milligrams, at which point it would be time to check a blood level and see where you're at. So that's my dosing strategy for low dose lithium. And sort of by definition, then it means that people have zero side effects because if they got one, we would have stopped on the way up. And most people seem to be able to get on it this way with zero side effects. About one person in 10, it's just too dulling, makes them feel flat and blah and low. And that, in my experience, doesn't get better um, with time or with increasing the dose, which just makes it worse. Um, and those people, in my in my view, just can't take lithium. Uh, clarification, if people got a side effect on their way up, I would then have them go back down a step and continue to take that dose that they could fully tolerate uh, for at least a week or more until we could establish that, that it really didn't contribute any benefit. And then we would know, well, we gave it as much of a try as we could, any higher a dose would be a problem, um, and it didn't work, so now we can taper it quickly out over a week or two, it's only been on it for a week or two, um, and move on to something else. Um, I should back up and say, um, there is lithium carbonate and then there's lithium orotate, and there's a whole different world of lithium and low-dose lithium with a different delivery mechanism for lithium um, called lithium orotate. And it's plausible that people who can't take lithium carbonate could take lithium orotate. And so I've made a separate video here about lithium orotate, um, but we have almost no research data. In fact, I think we have basically zero research data on that in uh, humans, um, except for one study I heard recently from King's College in London, looking at brain concentrations of lithium from lithium orotate. So uh, the research is getting underway, it's exciting. All right, so what about the risks of low-dose lithium? Well, toxicity, which is associated with those high blood levels, is basically a zero risk if you keep those blood levels down there at the bottom. Um, there's a kidney risk that goes with lithium, and that is very clearly dose-related. And so staying away from those high blood levels reduces that risk, I think, to almost zero. Um, thyroid, though, um, lithium can mess with your thyroid, and uh, it depends means some people are more at risk than others. You need to know what your thyroid is doing before you start taking lithium in any form, in my opinion, and then keep track of it um, once you're underway. So if this is such a great idea, why isn't it more widely used? Well, here's three reasons. First, it's lithium. Uh, lithium just has a bad reputation, kind of, oh, whoa, lithium, um, scary drug. Um, and that, you know, there's some reasons to be frightened about lithium at its full doses. You have to be using it properly and carefully. Um, but low-dose lithium is like a different medication. That's just not widely understood. And it does also require some blood tests, quite a few blood tests before you start, once you get underway, at least once a year, or maybe every six months, depending on your circumstances after that. And then one other reason I think is because the treatment guidelines emphasize efficacy, meaning it worked better than a placebo, um, and demonstrating that clearly and over and over again and robustly better than a placebo. Um, and that's the emphasis more than. Uh, risks. And um, I've got a whole video about this, why, I, why my recommendations don't seem to match up with the treatment guidelines um, that I'll post here. But the short version is I just prioritize the risks much higher um, and for reasons that I explain in another video. Um, efficacy, yeah, you should see some evidence for that. But medications with very, very low risks don't need as much evidence for efficacy, in my opinion. Um, to justify being tried because people are gonna take these medications for a long time. So having their risks and side effects be very low um, is very, very important. So I think that I'm gonna wrap up there and summarize, it's a different drug, it's unappreciated, it's got potential all across the mood spectrum, but I think you should see a physician or a nurse practitioner or a physician's assistant before you start and do this under medical supervision. Um, I'm aware that people go the lithium orotate route, which you can buy in a grocery store, um, and don't do that. Um, I'm aware that that happens. All right. 
Um, thanks for watching, and I'm going to connect some of my other videos, like the dementia one and the um, lithium orotate one here, um, once those are posted. Thanks for watching.